Good morning, good evening, everyone. This is another episode of todebate.net. Today we have the same co-hosts as ever, our wonderful Dirk. And the motion today is quite interesting in light of what's going to happen in the future, because this will happen. Either one or the other, maybe both. Maybe we both got it wrong here. And the motion is flying cars, flying cars are the future, not underground tunnels. So I will be in favor of that motion. This is a random decision, a flip of the coin. Dirk will be against it and Dirk will start. So Dirk will be in favor of tunnels and I will be in favor of flying cars. I was just <laughs> trying to grab my pen, which had fallen. <laughs> <laughs> so this is tactic, right? You try to confuse me and derail me because exactly. you know you are oh, look, in the weaker position. Look, look, there's a flying pen. Wonderful, that's the future. A flying pen. Sorry. Okay, I get myself a coffee and you can do your recording spiel and I come back when you're ready to debate. <laughs> okay, let's do this. Dirk is in favor of tunnels. It is your turn. You have two minutes. Okay, let's do this. Dirk goes first and argues against the motion. Woohoo! Finally, we talk about the future. Isn't that amazing? Flying cars, rocket packs, hoverboards, laser swords, <laughs> teleportation, the stuff we know from science fiction. Exactly. Um, the reason why flying cars sound like the future is science fiction. And that's what made me pick that start into our debate. It's from books you read, movies you've seen. And please, 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 for this debate, let's free ourselves from these pictures, no matter how cool they are for a moment, and think of it. So, the idea of a flying car is to have millions of cars that bring you from your house to the mall, to the office, etc. Now, non-flying cars already kill about 1.2 million people each year. Cars falling out of the sky? What could possibly go wrong with that? Let's move on to the tech required in order to get these cars safe. You need to fly around a lot of weight. Anyone concerned about wasting energy? Anyone? Anyone here? We already drive around more than two tons worth of uh, material to transport one or two person in our current cars um, just to move on the ground. Yeah, sure. Let's add another ton or so and propel that into the air. Brilliant idea. Speaking of propelling... Yes, of course, there will be future tech, but right now it would mean you basically have a helicopter in your backyard and uh, it wouldn't be a paraglider because of three tons of weight. If you're already frustrated by your neighbor mowing the lawn on Saturday, imagine, imagine him taking off to get breakfast for, for his kids. I'm out of time now, but I do think I clearly show that flying cars are definitely not the future, however cool it looks in sci-fi movies. And the next segment, I will go into why tunnels are the better option. Now it's Sebastian's turn. Let's hear his argument. I will, I will respond to your arguments in my three minutes. But for now, let me go through some of my own arguments. Too many people would feel uncomfortable and not comfortable being underground. Why do we care more about building glass skyscrapers than transparent underground caves? Because we want to see the daylight, the sun. Most of us want to enjoy being outdoors. And anyway, this is by design. We are not biologically meant to remain indoors, but to roam around like this, to jump around like lions in the savannah. That's why we have windows, so we feel at least closer to the outdoors. We don't want holes in the ground. Also, second point, it's scary, dangerous. What if tunnels collapse or a fire starts off? There's bound to be some disaster one day. And I don't think crashes between flying cars will be as disastrous in terms of consequences as crashes and fires in tunnels. Flying cars, flying cars would not be restricted to the grid of underground tunnels. They could virtually take off indeed from anywhere, from your backyard. With a tunnel, you can only go you can only go where the tunnel leads you to. Tunnels will never, never be a complete solution, which is a serious drawback. Flying cars can be a complete uh, a holistic solution. And we're closer to, get, to getting flying cars in the form of drones or hovercrafts than to creating an underground network of tunnels. For all of Elon Musk's effort currently, they're all only limited to dig tunnels under LA where he lives which is the hardly the only place on the planet where people live and where we have traffic problems. And for those uh, 
who think it would be difficult to organize traffic in the skies, let's not forget that we always manage to come up with solutions. But a tunnel will always go from point A to point B. There's never going to be a solution for that. So it's quite clear to me that flying cars are the future, certainly not underground tunnels. And now on to Dirk. Let's hear his rebuttal. Fun thing. And fun fact to start with, yes, tunnels go from point A to point B. The same is true for roads, by the way, yet we seem still to manage to get from the point A we choose to the point B we choose. And that is exactly the trap you're falling in or leading our listeners into right now. So let's again, I know it's an exercise. We had to move away from that sci-fi picture in my first segment. Now this time, let's move away from another picture, from a 150-year-old picture. That's about the time that we managed just fine doing tunnels and uh, having transport in that. But this is probably the picture you have in mind, right? The typical metro system that you have a love-hate relationship with. This is what people think of when we say tunnels. Now this is not the tunnels that I want us to envision. Envision the following world. Imagine a world where you have no big streets and cities anymore. Instead, traffic is led underground through entry points. So yes, you have your little streets uh, moving from your house to an entry point to a tunnel that solves your uh, point A to point B problem quite efficiently, I would say. Now we would have no individual cars either because what is clearly the future, that's something we all agree on, are self-driving cars. Instead, we are picked up by a small electric self-driving car at our door that almost without making sound drive through a system of underground tunnels. They are lining up behind each other once they are in that tunnel very efficiently, very fast. It will be the best of all worlds. You keep all the freedom of individual traffic without designing cities around cars and with the safety provided by autonomous driving and tunnel security we actually can solve for much easier than safety in the air. And all of this will be quite controlled, easy to secure as a system. And hey, if you miss the sunlight while you're driving in, in, the, in the underground tunnel, let's put on fancy screens around our self-driving car and solve for that. You can look at nature while we are driving without making a sound. Imagine that world, no pedestrians that walk into the way of your car, no bikers that run you over, fast connections, no pollution from traffic, no sound. So it's like uh, no noise, not the helicopter that your neighbor starts in the backyard. Uh, instead, some whooshing sounds when you drive to the next tunnel collector. Does it sound like the future? I bet it does. And then what about long distance travel? There we are in the, in the project that we know from Elon Musk, the Hyperloop thingy. Uh, it might surprise you, but actually uh, underground tunnel systems and train systems that operate in them potentially go as fast and as efficient and maybe even using less energy than our current planes. And yes, again, less noise pollution, less pollution in the air, and you don't have to change the landscape in order to make something move. So I would say that's as well uh, a bit of the future. And a transport system I very much like to have. I live near an airport here. I would prefer to have two-thirds of these planes circling around, actually being underground tu uh, um, tunnel transportation systems. I love that idea. So, yes, the tunnels are the future. Sorry, no matter how cool the, the flying car thingy might look like. Next up, Sebastian. Let's hear it. I'm totally with you. I mean, I'd love to replace nature by screens and the daylight by blue and you know yellow screens. That's so compelling. I'd just love to go from, I don't know, from LA to New York, from Paris to London, uh, as is currently the case, to you know, an underground tunnels and, and, and enjoy nature through uh, an LCD screen. That's just a wonderful picture. Thank you, Doug. I think you convinced everyone on that one. Here, to be more serious, I think I was about to answer about your deaths on the road. Indeed, we're going to all self-driving cars. We will have safe self-driving flying cars. So there will not be any accidents. It's obvious. In fact, you will not own a car anymore because it will be an Uber-like system. You'll just hop on a flying taxi and you'll just hop off. So there will not be millions of cars in the air. I don't want that either. I agree. I don't want the noise. I don't want the, I don't want the visual pollution. And I think this is the trend that we're going towards because this is what's happening on the road already. So 
deaths no i don't agree with that millions of cars no i don't think so. i don't think so either you talk about science fiction but that's not even the case if you talk uh, about one of the biggest uh, uh, airplane manufacturers on the planet airbus airbus is seriously developing prototype for flying devices flying maybe they don't, they don't call it flying cars but they have prototypes of based out of drones to carry one two three passengers so you can imagine a taxi system that way uh, additionally, what you mentioned about, yes, trains, why not? I'm not saying we won't have trains going underground, but here, what I'm talking about is the everyday transport solution. People will not want to go and travel like hedgehogs uh, under the planet and under the under the Earth's crust. Now, I'd like to raise some two additional points which I had neglected before, which I actually uh, think I think we need to consider. The cost of digging tunnels is huge, probably way larger than developing prototypes and then actual devices that will fly above us. We can already fly these drones. There's already helicopters indeed. So I do think the total cost will be way bigger to, to actually build these tunnels. Beyond the cost, there is also a safety concern and I think a practical concern. In many places, you will not be able to build tunnels. Why? Because of earthquakes, because of the way the earth is constructed. I think it will be too dangerous to have tunnels in earthquake volcano ridden places like Indonesia maybe between San Francisco and LA itself. I don't know, I'm not an expert on this, but I'm raising the, the question. And even if it's safe, do people, will people really feel safe if they know there's an earthquake which can happen anytime and you're stuck underground? Maybe by the way, it's safer to be underground, I don't know. But like from an emotional perspective, I would feel very claustrophobic to be underground while, while there is an earthquake or volcano next to me. So. Overall, I do think there is a number of good arguments in favor of flying cars. The noise aspect, I think, can be taken care of with noise cancellation frequency signals, which can probably try and cancel the noise um, that is happening. Who knows what, what's going to happen? Science comes into the way of developing better products over time. You're laughing, but I do believe this is this can happen. I'm actually using a noise can cancellation headphone at the moment so that I don't hear you laugh uh, because this is disturbing my my speech. But yes, flying cars are clearly the, the future, not underground tunnels. Final statements. Dirk goes first. All right. First question. How much nature do you observe when you sit in a plane? Second question. Do you really think the, the future is people wearing noise cancelling headphones so they don't hear the traffic outside? I mean, and third question. When was the last uh, volcano eruption in Zurich where you live? I can tell you in Frankfurt where I live, there are neither earthquakes or vol volcano eruptions common. So yes, your, your argument about uh, the underground tunnels being dangerous in these places, sure, yeah, uh, let's not build tunnels in these places then and focus on all the others. Clearly, Elon Musk seemed to believe that in LA he can do that. And for everyone who's claustrophobic in tunnels, you find somebody else who's, who has fear of light. So uh, how about we just stay with our current system then? It's not working that way. So in a nutshell, my final round. Flying cars are stupid. Tunnels, however, promise to run energy efficient transport systems, free our cities from pollution and noise and are safer as well. I leave it to the listener to decide what future sounds better. Overall, I think we agree. I don't want to spend much time in traffic anyway. And if I spend my time outside traffic, I prefer nature over any transport system I see. Thank you very much. Sebastian. How much nature do I see through a plane? Actually, quite a lot. I think it's wonderful to see uh, uh, cities and the Earth's surface from a plane. It's beautiful. I actually enjoy it and see the clouds. Secondly, when I'm talking about noise cancellation, I, I imagine a device where it's on the flying car, which is sending signals, which is canceling the noise, omnidirectional. That's what I'm thinking of. Uh, the third thing, you talk about Zurich, how many volcanoes and earthquakes are in Zurich. In Zurich, there's 300,000 people. In Jakarta, where there are uh, indeed volcanoes nearby and earthquakes, it's 30 million. The population, most of the population is living in places where indeed there are risks uh, to, the, to the land area where they're living on. And in conclusion, what's more exciting? To fly like a bird in the clear blue skies or to hide like a mole under the surface of the earth? Indeed, I will let my listeners choose what is better. 
Thank you for listening. All right, we're right on time. Thank you for listening again to this wonderful debate. Any final remarks, Dirk? That was a lot of fun to debate on, I have to say. <laughs> and uh, how about I get my tunnel and you get your flying car and then we decide. <laughs> I'm fine with that. <laughs> totally fine. I'll take the car, the flying car anyway, anytime. By the way, I, I was, I was, not, I was, there was a true random flip of the, of the coin, but by default, I think I would have gone for tunnels. <laughs> by I, default. Yeah, when, when we flipped the coin, my first thought literally was, crap, I have to defend the non-futuristic scenario because I, I very much like the visual of uh, Star Wars and uh, the fifth element. Uh, I think the fifth element was one of the first one to really do that in the movie. And I love the idea. And if it wouldn't make any sound, I might... Uh, but I mean, the energy piece and uh, yes, uh, security piece of having these things autonomously landing and starting and all that, I do see that happening for... Uh, delivery drones much easier than for anything else and I don't want to have a personal helicopter that's really <laughs> I, I'm not convinced that we want to go that way I, I agree I think uh, yeah and in a world where people don't can uh, where there are people on this planet that cannot um, uh, cannot on a, on a serious note they cannot afford a second toothbrush I also find it very telling that in the western world we debate whether or not we should have landing places for flying taxis this is this is a uh, the crazy world we live in, uh, but we are not going uh, going to go there. I, I am trying believe... to change things, though. We talk about pollution and things like this. I, I told you I just came back from Jakarta, and now I carry my skateboard everywhere I travel. It's in my in my big luggage bag. So in Jakarta, people looked at me like I was a crazy guy because I use my skateboard on the roads because there's so much traffic problem that it goes so slowly. I'm actually going almost as fast with a skateboard. There's Hang on, you have to picture Jakarta. 30 million people, traffic problems, insane, pollution, which is not great when you're skateboarding. Almost no cyclists either, right? There's just not, not no space for pedestrians. The pavement is, is crappy, right? So I'm not trying to set the trend and people are looking at me like when I go to various external meetings and I got the skateboard and got my shirt and my, in my jeans and my backpack so I can change and be half decent. They're like, did you actually skateboard from that spot to that spot here? So I have a dream that one day, you know, Jakarta and all the major cities will be replaced by bikes, skateboards, you know, electric scooters, whatever it is, and, and indeed solve the pollution problem. So maybe it's not going to be tunnels, it's not going to be flying cars, it's just you know, hyper-local, electrical, whatever, ground transportation, or just use your legs. Yeah, I was about to say, maybe this, this uh, if, you, if you think of future of traffic in places like this, this should be the future, right? Like uh, stuff like, uh, where, you, where you drive with a scooter or anything. If the weather permits, and I, I do believe, imagine, imagine you could snap a finger and create the world you want to, and in the moment notice everything that's uh, that's with a traditional engine is gone. Maybe you put a roof over the main road so the people are not uh, drowned in uh, when whenever there is a rain shower, and they ca they all have electrical scooters and such that have latest. AI tech in there so they avoid uh, accidents. This is a this is a futuristic world I would really like to see. Uh, instead of building the roof, what about tunnels so that you're not flooded by the rain? <laughs> <laughs> I I heard somebody somebody I respect told me that in Jakarta that is dangerous to build. So I maybe they no idea. To be maybe they maybe they're. Honest, I don't know. It's just there's a psychological element. That's why I shifted from the scientific area, which I don't know. It's the psychological one. Like, I, I don't know if I want to be on the ground when I know there's volcanoes and earthquakes all the time. Yeah, I do think, I do think uh, as often, um, it may vary based on the place you look at. Yeah. But I, I would be fine if we, if we have like smart and underground or partially underground systems in the places where we can do that. Um, I would be fine with that for a starter. So let's let's move away from this uh, this polluting, loud, noisy, dangerous type of traffic that we have everywhere on this planet. Have you ever been to uh, Toronto or Canada? I know I know about Toronto. I've been there recently, a few months ago, and just for a, a couple of days. And they have almost an underground city because of the of the poor weather, the, the cold weather in the winter. It's funny how you move from one place to another in the city by walking underground. So there's like <laughs> like there's shopping malls. There's shops and stuff not just the underground system you can actually walk across the city by going underground and that's the first place in, in the world where i've seen this where there's so much there's a, such a dense network 
So if you don't know or if you ha happen to be there one day, just you know, give a look and remember our debate. That's it. That was today's debate. Thank you very much. The last debate for today. And thank you for listening. And stay tuned for the next episode. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.